Hi everyone, welcome back. Today's video is about glycogenesis. If you want to skip to any particular section of this video, you can do so by clicking the timestamps found in the description section below. Also, please make sure to subscribe to our channel as this helps our channel out a lot. Okay, let's get to the video. Glycogenesis is the process by which glucose molecules are assembled into glycogen and stored. So let's briefly go over glycogen and then explore the process of glycogenesis. Glycogen is a large branched polysaccharide. It's made up of glucose units connected by alpha 1 glycosidic bonds in linear chains. However, this molecule is branched and the branches are connected with the alpha 1 6 glycosidic bond and are found at points approximately every 8 to 12 glucose residues. Due to its branched nature, glycogen forms dense, spherical granules within cells. These granules are found in the cytoplasm of liver and muscle cells. These liver and muscle cells consist of both glycogen and enzymes needed for glycogen metabolism. The highly branched nature also allows for rapid enzymatic access to glucose at the branch points. This enables quick release of glucose when needed. Now that we know what glycogen is, let's talk about how it's made. We know that glycogenesis is the process by which glucose molecules are assembled into glycogen and stored. It's essential for regulating blood glucose levels and maintaining a reserve of readily available energy. It occurs in several steps and is most active when blood glucose levels are high. An example of this instance is after a high carbohydrate meal. There are four steps in glycogenesis. This includes the activation of glucose, primer formation by glycogenin, elongation by glycogen synthase, and branching by the branching enzyme. Let's go through each of the steps in more detail. Activation of glucose. The process of glycogenesis starts when glucose enters the cell and is phosphorylated to form glucose 6-phosphate. This is also called G6P. This phosphorylation is catalyzed by hexokinase in muscle cells or glucokinase in liver cells. The phosphorylation helps retain glucose within the cell by preventing it from diffusing back out. G6P is then isomerized by the enzyme phosphoglucomutase to produce glucose 1-phosphate, which is also called G1P. This conversion is essential because G1P is a substrate that reacts with uridine triphosphate, also called UTP, to form uridine diphosphate glucose, which is also abbreviated as UDP glucose. UDP glucose is a high energy precursor necessary for the polymerization step that follows. Once UDP glucose is formed, it serves as the immediate substrate for the enzyme glycogen synthase. This is a key regulatory enzyme of glycogenesis. Now let's go to step number two, primer formation by glycogenin. Glycogen synthase, which we referred to before, requires an initial primer. This is provided by a protein called glycogenin. Glycogenin has an autoglycosylating ability. This means that it can attach glucose residues to itself, forming a small glycogen primer. Then, glycogen synthase can extend this glycogen primer. This glycogenin glycogen core serves as the starting point for further glucose addition. Now, let's move to step number three elongation by glycogen synthase. Glycogen synthase adds glucose units from UDP glucose to a growing glycogen chain by forming alpha-1,4 glycosidic bonds. Glycogen synthase is tightly regulated and becomes active in response to insulin. Insulin signals a high energy state in the cell and promotes glucose storage. And finally, we have the fourth step, branching by the branching enzyme. An essential feature of glycogen is its highly branched nature. This increases its solubility and allows for rapid synthesis and breakdown of glycogen molecules. The branching enzyme introduces branch points to glycogen 
by cleaving an alpha-1-4 glycosidic bond in the linear glycogen chain. Then the cleaved linear glycogen chain is reattached via an alpha-1-6 glycosidic bond at least four glucose residues away from an existing branch. This process creates a highly branched structure. Branching enhances the number of terminal ends of glycogen molecules, where enzymes can add or remove glucose units allowing for efficient storage and mobilization of energy. That's it for this video. I hope this video was helpful for you. If it was, please make sure to subscribe and like our channel. And also check out all of our other videos of this channel as well. See you in the next video. Bye.